So if you follow this channel, you know that I change my pedal board up quite often. My friends at Mono Creators sent me their new small rail pedal board as well as the new Stealth pedal board case. This thing's really sleek, really lightweight, and looks awesome. I love the orange accents. And you'll notice that this is a pretty traditional rail style pedal board. So if you're not a fan of the traditional mono cutouts, this could be the board for you. But I've got a huge session this next week and I'm getting ready for that. I didn't want to build back out onto my really large pedal board and I didn't want to just rely on my small mono light pedal board. So we're going back to the happy medium, kind of where it all started for me. This is about an 18 by 13 inch pedal board, obviously classic rail style. I've got quite a few new pedals that I'm checking out that are going to go on this board. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing things a little bit differently for this one. This build's going to be a bit different than some of the others I've done in the past. And of course, I'm going to tell you why. Most notably, plot twist, I'm not using dual lock on this pedal board. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and talk about pedal choices and get into the build. So here's the deal. I'm relying a lot more on my amp these days to get tones, especially in the studio. So I'm not 100% sure what pedals I want to go on this board. I know I want to keep the signal chain fairly minimal, but I still need to have plenty of options because I'm covering everything from Motown hits to funk stuff to 80s power ballads. So I've got to be able to do a lot of different things. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to land on this board, and I definitely don't want to settle on a layout just a few days before the session and then dual lock everything down and then decide I want to make some changes. So I'm actually using what comes with basically every pedal board, and that is just regular old Velcro. The good thing about this is it makes layout changes a lot easier than dual lock, but it still holds everything secure enough. I'm not going to be throwing this under a tour bus or in the overhead compartment of a plane yet, so I'm not really worried about things moving around. In fact, I want to be able to swap things in and out quickly on this session if I get the itch to. Um, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to use on it, but we'll get into the build. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the board itself so I can go ahead and start kind of getting an idea of layout and what I want to do. Alright, so because I'm doing such a wide variety of music, I need quite a few things on this board. Now, the reason I love this size is because I can fit everything I need to on there and still have a couple of options. So, I need classic fuzz. Whenever I need classic fuzz, I go Hayes 67 basically 100% of the time. I don't need octave fuzz or filter or anything, so I'm not going to be going with a congra. Now, one thing that will be on here uh, that won't actually go on the board itself is going to be a wah. I have to use that on one song, and that's just going to live off the board because that's not something I regularly use. Now, something new to the channel that I'm really, really loving is the Brown Amplification Atom. You've seen this if you've seen any of my shorts. If you haven't, go check those out. This is a really, really great sounding overdrive and does the heavy overdrive distortion thing well. Um, I'm also going to be using the Gulf. This is a chorus vibrato. It's a really awesome sounding and looking pedal. It also allows me to save a preset on the pedal, which is super handy. So I have one that will be a vibrato preset and one that will be uh, the chorus sound that stays on the pedal. So I need that. I'm also doing some funk stuff and the Cali 76 is the best compressor I've used still bar none. This model they don't make anymore. This is the compact and there's not a bad sound in it. So I really love it that's definitely going on the board have to be in tune so polytune mini a staple on the board small tunes well easy to read pretty simple another pedal i've been really digging recently again is the norton preamp this pedal has been on many many boards of mine and i've recently fallen back in love with it um, i use it with the kemper a lot um, but i've just started using it a lot with amps again and really really like what it does especially with my deluxe reverb um, also from Norton, the Foundation Overdrive. Um, this has become my go-to for Tube Screamer style stuff, and I basically run it with the drive maxed out. Um, I run a different style of clipping, not the typical asymmetrical clipping. I don't remember what it is exactly. Sorry, Todd. Um, and it has a bass switch, so you can bring a bass back into the signal or cut it out, which I find really helpful depending on what you're going for. Um, 
I feel really good about that as far as drive section and modulation. However, I definitely need delay and reverb and I have a plan. Uh, my plan is to have both the Strum and El Capistan and the Flint on the pedal board itself, but I have a trick up my sleeve. Uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is actually running the Source Audio Collider um, and maybe even the Chase Bliss Mood off of the board on a little sidecar rig. So I think the way that I'm gonna do this um, is actually have both of these on the mono light pedal board and I'm powering it with their new power supply that can be USB bus powered, which is crazy. Um, but I'm gonna have these live off the board. So if I do decide that I need something a little bit more ambient or ethereal, which one song kind of calls for, I'll have these both in the tick strapped on my case to make it easy to carry around. But I think these are gonna live on that sidecar rig. Um, because I'm running both the Flint and the El Capstan, I'm also going to run the Analog Endeavor's favorite switch. This allows me to have a preset on both pedals, which is really, really handy. Um, so the hard part of this is going to be layout, being happy with it, making everything easy to switch, and also make a lot of sense for signal routing. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on that. All right, I think I feel pretty good about this layout um, because most everything already had dual lock on the back of it. It's pretty much sitting in place. I may add some zip ties or something like that temporarily, but I feel good about this layout. I can get to everything well. Uh, pro tip, don't just lay out a pedal board because it looks good a certain way and also don't just lay it out in a way that reflects the accuracy of the signal chain. I'll actually have a few different things going here that I'll explain in a bit, but this is really easy for me to get around and really intuitive, especially if I'm singing for me to just stomp on something and be able to get to my most used pedals the most easily. So that's that. I'm going to work on cables, power cables, and just a quick little tie down tidying. And that's pretty much it. All right, here we go. So I've got the cables done. Fortunately, I didn't have to make anything else. Um, and I'll go ahead and quickly walk through signal chain. So the first thing, my guitar is actually going into the Hayes 67. This is because this pedal only runs off of a nine volt battery. And because if I left something plugged in, it could slowly drain the battery. I like having this first in the chain. Also because this has insanely heavy duty quarter inch jacks on it. So my cable will not easily come unplugged. So I have this here, it's going here and then immediately going to the poly Polytune Mini, out of the Polytune Mini into the compressor. Compressor is then going into the Norton preamp. Norton preamp is then feeding the foundation overdrive. 
from the foundation overdrive into the brown atom and then my brown atom is going back into the volume pedal i like having all of my drives and dirt pedals pre-volume pedal so that way if i am swelling up it keeps the gain of the pedal the same and it's just actually bringing up volume if i want to change the gain structure of a pedal i use the volume knob on my guitar so then it's going from the volume pedal, we're hitting the Gulf, we're going mono for right now out of the Gulf into the El Capstan, mono from the El Capstan into the Flint. Now I could run stereo out of the Flint if I needed to, I do like having mono delay and stereo reverb, and also the Flint's tremolo sounds really, really cool in stereo. Of course these two are so close together it would be easy for me to just get a second patch cable and jumper going stereo out of the Gulf into the El Capstan and then adding a cable going stereo out of the El Capstan into the Flint. So that signal chain, now I just need to route power. Thank you. 
So I'm really happy with how this board turned out. I still need to get these cables managed a bit better, but it's gonna be perfect for this gig. And I'm planning on staying on this pedal board for quite some time. So there's gonna be another video following up talking about that session. So if you're interested in my approach to session work, how I'm using this rig and hearing it a bit more in action, then definitely check out that video. I also am going to probably end up doing a final build on this board with what I land on after I spend some time with everything. So again, big thanks to Mono Creators Brown Amplification and Zounds for making this build possible. I'm really, really happy with everything that's on here and I'm always happy to have supportive companies that I love. I wouldn't be talking about them if it wasn't something that I use and I definitely think that the Brown Amplification Atom is a great, great overdrive and I think this is a really, really cool board series for Mono. The fact that it's gonna be a bit more affordably priced than some of their other stuff makes it a bit more attainable for everybody and at the end of the day it's a pedal board it's holding my pedals it's not something that i want to have to spend a ton of money on so definitely go check out this new line thanks again for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video